All praise to you, eternal God, and Jesus Christ, our Savior, Holy Spirit, three in one, our light and our salvation. Good evening. Welcome to the Daily Office. Thank you for joining me. This is Night Prayer for Friday, November 29th. It's the 27th week after Pentecost and week seven in the Psalm cycle. And the scripture for this service, Psalm 141 and 1 Peter chapter 3, beginning at verse 13 to chapter 4, verse 6. Our help is in the name of God Most High, the maker of heaven and earth. Let us confess our sins to God. O merciful God, source of all being, we have sinned against you through our own fault, in our thoughts and words and deeds, and in what we have failed to do. We have not loved you with our whole hearts. We have not loved our neighbor as ourselves. We beseech you, overlook our faults, cast our sins behind your back, that we may serve you and praise you all the days of our lives. Amen. And may the Almighty and merciful God grant us forgiveness of all our sins and the grace and the comfort of the Holy Spirit. Amen. O oh God, come to my assistance, make haste to help me. Glory to you, source of all being, eternal word and Holy Spirit as in the beginning, so now and forever. Amen. Alleluia, I cry out to you, make haste to help me. Alleluia. Psalm 141. Alleluia, I cry out to you, make haste to help me. Bend your ear to my voice and answer me when I call. Let my prayer rise before you as incense and the lifting up of my hands as the evening sacrifice. Set a watch before my mouth and guard the door of my lips. Let me not be inclined to do any evil thing, to practice wicked works with them that work evil, nor let me eat their delicacies. Let the righteous smite me. It shall be a kindness, and let them reprove me. It shall be an excellent oil which shall not break my head, for my prayer is continually against their wicked deeds. When their leaders are overthrown in stony places, they shall hear my words, for they are sweet. Our bones are scattered at the grave's mouth, as when one cuts and splits wood upon the earth. But my eyes are on you, my beloved God. In you is my trust. Leave me not destitute. Keep me from the snares which they have laid for me and the traps of the workers of iniquity. And let the wicked fall into their own traps while I escape. Glory to you, source of all being, eternal word and Holy Spirit, as in the beginning, so now and forever. Amen. Alleluia. Alleluia, I cry out to you, make haste to help me. Alleluia. The lesson is from the first letter of Peter, chapter 3, beginning at verse 13. Now who will harm you if you are eager to do what is good? But even if you do suffer for doing what is right, you are blessed. Do not fear what they fear. Do not be intimidated. But in your hearts sanctify Christ as Lord. Always be ready to make your defense to anyone who demands from you an accounting for the hope that is in you. Yet do it with gentleness and reverence. Keep your conscience clear so that when you are maligned, those who abuse you for your good conduct in Christ may be put to shame. For it is better to suffer for doing good, if suffering should be God's will, than to suffer for doing evil. 
For Christ also suffered for sins once for all, the righteous for the unrighteous, in order to bring you to God. He was put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit, in which also he went and made a proclamation to the spirits in prison, who in former times did not obey when God waited patiently in the days of Noah, during the building of the ark, in which a few, that is, eight persons, were saved through water. And baptism, which this prefigured, now saves you, not as a removal of dirt from the body, but as an appeal to God for a good conscience through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God with angels, authorities, and powers made subject to him. Since, therefore, Christ suffered in the flesh, arm yourselves also with the same intention. For whoever has suffered in the flesh has finished with sin so as to live for the rest of your earthly life, no longer by human desires, but by the will of God. You have already spent enough time in doing what the Gentiles like to do, living in licentiousness, passions, drunkenness, revels, carousing, and lawless idolatry. They are surprised that you no longer join them in the same excesses of dissipation, and so they blaspheme. But they will have to give an accounting to him who stands ready to judge the living and the dead. For this is the reason the gospel was proclaimed even to the dead, so that though they had been judged in the flesh as everyone is judged, they might live in the spirit as God does. Here ends the lesson. Now let us offer our prayers and petitions. We thank you for bringing us safely to the end of this day. We thank you for all the blessings that you have granted. Deliver us from hardness of heart. Forgive us our sins and offenses that your light may shine forth from us. For all who seek you, tender God, that they may find and be found that your will may be done in all that we undertake to the benefit of ourselves, our families and friends, the church and all people. For the intentions of all who've asked our prayers and for all of your intentions. Our beloved which art in heaven, holy is your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us as we forgive others. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Let us pray. Accept our evening prayer, dear God, and the lifting of our hands to you as our evening sacrifice. In you we place our trust, for you will not leave us destitute nor ensnared in the traps of the wicked. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Alleluia, O tender God. You have seduced me, and I was seduced. Alleluia. And the Almighty and merciful God, the source of all being, eternal word and Holy Spirit, bless us and keep us now and forever. Amen. Alleluia.